Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this Monday, August 31st, 2015, Worldwide Transmission. We're going to be looking at the latest developments with the world economy. We're going to be looking at the latest developments in election 2016. We're going to be interviewing Matthew Heineman, the incredible director of the film Cartel Land, that's one of the most daring documentaries I've ever seen inside the government-controlled drug war in Mexico. It did win the Sundance, Sundance Film Festival Best Documentary Award as well. He will be joining us coming up to look at what could happen in America, what's already happening in the United States under this phony drug war. We'll have strong criticisms of the drug war and strike directly at the root of it that is helping degenerate our society into a dark age bedlam. Bonnie Hari's launching a new initiative today, the Food Babe, and we've got a bunch of news we're going to break down on the fight for health freedom, the fight to be able to choose the food we eat and labeling. A lot of breaking news on that front. That said, interspersed with those guests today, I'm lining up right now either at the bottom of this hour or in the fourth hour during overdrive, and if not tomorrow, a gentleman that comes highly recommended by Sheriff Richard Mack and by others uh, who is running for sheriff uh, down in Houston, in Harris County, and he can give us the inside scoop on exactly what's going on down there with this police officer, the sheriff's deputy that was shot dead Friday, and it took the mainstream media until today to even begin to say, oh, it might have been racially motivated. This is all the White House. This is all MSNBC, MTV pushing this and triggering mentally ill people to take action. And it goes both ways. We saw the attack uh, that took place with Roof in Charleston killing nine people. And as this tit for tat begins to snowball, it can get out of control very, very quickly. But why would the social engineers be pushing this? Obviously, it's divide and conquer. But more importantly, they want a brand revolution, not as going after criminals in government, not in actually going for the head of the snake. That's above Obama, the offshore central banks. But to then have revolution be focused on the average cop on the beat. And that's because a revolution pointed at the police will fail. Because it's not a just revolution. Shooting people in the back is discrediting. It's murderous. It's pathetic. And I don't care if it's a crazed psycho cop or a crazed psycho racist black guy, white guy, whatever. On its face, I'll have no part of that revolution. I will have part in the new renaissance and a rediscovery of what made civilizations great. I know the ideas I promote will win the fight for the hearts and minds. All I need is a chance to present them to the public and we'll win. That's why they fight tooth and nail. That's what the Clinton White House papers show at their library that World Net Daily sued and got last year that they're obsessed with stopping alternative thought, controlling the alternative left, controlling the alternative right, to stagnate debate and shut down free speech. And that's what political correctness is all about. So when we come back, the latest, here's from the London Guardian, central banks can't save the markets from a crash, and they shouldn't even try. All this and more straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones. This is the GCN Radio Network. The websites are prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on this 31st day of August, 2015, this Monday transmission. Yeah, we're going to do a fourth hour of overdrive today. Within the next two weeks, we're going to launch the fourth hour live every day, co-hosted by myself most days. But many days, it will be my reporters, their guests, special guest and others co-hosting the fourth hour. That'll be a roundup of news, the latest breaking news, video clips, special reports. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be very, very powerful. And I'm just getting the reporters 
warmed up to it. Uh, I mean, they like the idea, but I'm getting them uh, eased in to the deep water of live radio slash TV uh, by having different uh, reporters host the show. So the fourth hour will be hosted by Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs, the dynamic duo today. And I was going to have this sheriff's candidate uh, down in Harris County, down in Houston on myself. But I thought, uh, why not just get him on with these guys? And of course, uh, Richard Mack, he comes highly recommended from Richard Mack, from a lot of other folks. If you go to his website, he's a former Marine, police officer, you name it. Uh, Carl Pittman, he's got the endorsement of Sheriff Arpaio, and he is running for sheriff uh, down there in the county where the sheriff's deputy in the very sheriff department he's running for was just uh, executed, Darren Goforth. So I been talking via text with Carl Pittman, and uh, it comes highly recommended from retired Army Colonel, filmmaker Chuck Undersea, as well knows him. It was Chuck put me in contact with him yesterday. So it looks like we're going to have Carl Pittman on either in the fourth hour today or tomorrow. The reason I'm excited about it is he sounds, acts just like a David Clark. Uh, you know, really smart, focused, patriotic, not left, not right, a constitutionalist says he wants to restore the Bill of Rights and Constitution. That's the type of sheriffs and police chiefs we need in this country. Not little federal minions uh, that basically just repeat the whole Southern Poverty Law Center garbage. Because make no mistake, George Soros has overthrown more than 15 countries in the last 30 years. The last one was Ukraine two years ago. George Soros has openly tried to crash the U.S. dollar repeatedly, on record. He's proud of it. George Soros is a wanted man in multiple European countries. George Soros is funding the racist, kill the cops, kill the white people, Black Lives Matter movement that is being given so much attention and support by the White House. And that's being done to build revolution as attacking local government so the feds can come in as the savior. Period. This is a destabilization operation, and many departments are intimidated by this. So they're rolling over and telling the feds, you come in, and you tell us how to run our operations, and you tell us how to hire and who to fire, and we'll do whatever you say and basically become federalized and embed BATF agents in every major unit. Uh, I mean, it's a nightmare scenario. It's happening right now. And this is the intimidation, this is the political correctness, this is the takeover. Are there problems in departments across the country? Absolutely. Is there militarization that's a problem? Absolutely. But it's the globalists that set up that culture, set it up to fail, give them all the federal riot gear, the MRAPs, the sound cannons, the microwave guns, and then tell them the Tea Party and veterans are the enemy, and then they have the media promote some isolated but truly disgusting events and very questionable events of police officers killing innocent people, and then they project that and make it racial, wrapped up in class envy, a classic bona fide 110% destabilization communist tactic. And if you look at where Obama and Reverend Wright and all these people come from, it is directly out of the communist manifesto it is directly out of Bill Ayers. It is directly out of Rules for Radicals. Saul Alinsky, who dedicated his book to Lucifer. Who Hillary Clinton wrote a bunch of letters to praising his tactics. How did Obama get his cousin Odinga the prime ministership of Kenya? There was no such thing as a prime ministership. There was an elected president. When he and his Muslim minority couldn't get elected president, Obama told him in an open letter, start riots, don't stop and they will give you a position in the government, and they did. That's what these tactics are, is terrorism, and I don't use that term lightly, and bullying. True terrorism is violence or the threat of violence for a political or economic aim. Look up the classic definition, and that's what you'll find. And this is horribly evil, People with unbelievable wealth. George Soros isn't just worth $10 billion, folks. He's got accounts all over the world. He's well known to be one of these shadow elites. 
And I use Soros because he's the, he's the most visible, arrogant head of all this. But beneath that, beneath that iceberg tip, there is a giant organization, the Ford Foundation, the Carnegie Endowment, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with Warren Buffett. There is all the ACORN uh, type groups and organizations. Battleground Texas. All these groups are pushing for a cultural clash, are pushing for a major crisis out of which the feds themselves controlled by offshore interest can come in as the saviors. And again, Forbes says that Soros is worth $24 billion. And then it gets into how George Soros is the winner of Obama's war on coal, shutting down almost half our coal power plants. Turns out Soros has invested in the alternatives to that. See how these people operate? They are mafia kingpins. Who else could be a Nazi collaborator, a hound sniffing out hidden Jews and teaching the Nazis the Jewish tactics to hide their wealth and escape? But George Soros, when he was 14, 15, and 16, and then not getting in trouble and basically running the Democratic Party today. It's outrageous. And you don't hear a word from the Jewish organizations about it because they're bought and paid for and controlled by the very same interest. It's sickening. Truly sickening. I mean, I've got more videos we could play for you. I've seen more than 20 Black Lives Matters videos from Texas and New York and Missouri where they say pigs in a blanket, only good p pigs have wings, let's give pigs wings, that means angels, you know, kill them. Outright chants, deck the halls with dead cops, fa la 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 la. And then the cops are being shot, they are being killed on a weekly basis when they're in their patrol cars, when they're pumping gas, when they're at accident scenes. And all that's going to make the police do is freak out even more and get even more paranoid of people in general, but black folks particularly, to where they will slow roll and will not respond in your neighborhoods and you'll be fed on by criminals. And yes, they will then be paranoid and will lash out and will be heavy handed and it will create incredible friction and divide and conquer that will be visited upon innocent people. And that's exactly what George Soros and the Democrats want because that will then drive you even more to the Democratic Party's rebranding as a pure racial organization, like they were in the days of the Klan, but this time for black people, Hispanics, and others. And they'll coddle, and they'll have TV shows about how you're victims and how they're going to get the bad cops and how they're going to federalize them when the whole time they played the entire paradigm. And there is a new video out today. Black Lives Matter chant called disgusting by police leader, CBS News, Minnesota, David Clark. And they marched yesterday and chanted, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. What officers and others say they find offensive is also protected free speech. When you start saying kill people, which some of these groups actually said, you know, we need to see dead cops. When that gets pushed, it is no longer free speech. But all that has to happen is the police have to realize that they need to get their house in order in many cases. They need to understand they've been set up. They need to understand that globalization is here. The local takeover of states, counties, and cities is here. And the social engineers need to have a way to, again brand the civil war they're going to start as racially based and then that's the smokescreen for the UN and the globalist in phase two to come in with the new reconciliation UN run government which is actually being proposed right now to have the UN come in and oversee our elections open our borders up the Pope's coming to speak probably in the middle of more stock market collapse more racial tension you can see all this being being lined up right now and just last week, two cops got shot and killed in racially motivated activity. It's clear. And we see the reporter and the cameraman killed.
and the guy wants to start a race war, he says.